Holy Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that we can listen to your word. We pray that you would help us, that you would inspire us, and that you would give us the strength to do your will. We pray that we may receive your grace and understanding, and we pray that uh, we may understand these wonderful teachings from Beria. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello. This is the English service of Sung Rak Church. And we are every day so happy and we are so proud about the Beria movement. And we want, we want to call and invite everyone around the world uh, to follow uh, this wonderful Beria movement. So let us, let us continue to uh, talk about all the wonderful teachings that we can find in Beria. And when we learn as well, let us also, when we learn, not only just to enjoy ourselves, but let us also be able to spread these teachings. Uh, and so these are all, these are all, of course, these are all the teachings about Jesus. They come from, these, from the words of Jesus. So let us all spread, let us spread these, uh, let us spread these words around, around for everyone as, as much as we can. And so today we're going to talk about something uh, that is very interesting and something related to our lives. This is also, uh, this is also very, uh, this is something that is special and unique for the barrier movement and something that uh, we can always, always be reminded of. And so I want to talk about use the help of angels. Use the help of angels. So let us read the today's Bible passage. It is found in Luke chapter 4, verse 38 to 44. It is found in Luke chapter 4, verse 38 to 44. Let us read. Verse 38. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up once and began to wait on them. At sunset the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Messiah. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Amen. And so this Bible passage very much talks about Jesus, uh, Jesus in his most active time in his, while he was doing his ministry on earth. And so there were many other Bible passages like these in the Bible, particularly in the Gospels. And they tell us how Jesus, he literally in person, he went around, he went around in person, physically going here and doing that, helping people, actually doing actions to preach the gospel, speaking, speaking the words of God to the people. And he healed the sick. He physically laid hands on people. He healed them. And then he drove out demons and then he rebuked them. And then he did all kinds of healing and wonders and signs. And so Jesus, he actually did these things. He actually did these things by, by doing this action, doing the, doing the good deeds that God commanded him to do. And he did this, he went there, he went there. And so this is very inspiring for us. And so since Jesus did this, we can learn something from this. And yet there is, it's not just what Jesus did, 
but it is but what we can say it is really the driving power that was working behind Jesus and so we and so this is something that is also important to barrier not only are we talking about the actual deed but because we understand about what is going on in the spiritual world we know about the principles we know the syst- we know the system that is working in the spiritual world and because we know this so we can explain and then and then we ourselves we can do this ourselves and so we are talking about we are very talking so when we look at today's bible passage we are talking about what is going behind the scenes in the spiritual world what is that driving power that is that is going on behind jesus and so it is all, so this is all something that we can learn and we also we can do this and put it into practice and so first of all you know we must know that god wants to give god wants to give us everything that we need he wants to give us everything and so you and i you and i we may have our own ideas about what we need and what we want and what we feel like and yet god god also has that kind of similar idea but it is much it is also it is exactly what we need it is exactly what we need and this is very much about the spiritual life about the spiritual world and so god and so this is why first of all first of all god had sent jesus god had sent jesus and this was for a specific purpose god didn't just send jesus just so that God this is just so that Jesus he may perhaps live a normal life uh just you know just just have some few years on the earth he didn't do this but God had sent Jesus to accomplish something and this was to accomplish God's own will so Jesus Jesus he is the son of God and so he he came to the earth and this was not uh this was not to fulfill something else but it was to fulfill god's own will so god had a plan god had a will and then jesus came and he achieved all of it yes so likewise this is the same for us so we are trying to do the same thing that jesus is also doing yes and so what what and so of course uh, we also mentioned it in the previous week what was the main thing primarily that Jesus had done on this earth of course it was to die on the cross and then to raise to rise from the dead so this was this was of course this was the this was the main will of god yeah so Jesus he of course he completely he completely 100% achieved god's will he did achieve god's will 100% and yet and so and so now this is uh this is where the interesting thing happens and this is also connected with us and so we know that jesus uh so after jesus he had finished all his work and so he died and he rose from the dead then jesus said something very special he said he said he said and after i go i will not leave you alone but i will send you the holy spirit to be with you forever and so let us just read this just to recap our memory so we know that this is a very important bible passage and and this will be very helpful for us so let us read john chapter 14 john chapter 14 verse 15 to 17 let us just read it together let's read it together verse 15 If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Yeah, so here was here was in a nutshell uh something very useful about the holy spirit jesus said and before i go i will promise to se- to send you the holy spirit and he will be with you forever he is the spirit of truth 
And so, and so, and those, this is what Jesus did. He did send us the Holy Spirit. He did send us the Holy Spirit and he did come upon us. And now he is inside us. He lives inside us. So the Holy Spirit, he lives inside us just like a normal person will live inside a house. Yeah, so it is like this. It is like you and I in our, our, our human bodies, it is like the house. And the Holy Spirit, he lives in there. He lives in there. It is like his house. It is like his house. It is like his temple. Yes. So this is what has been given for us for sure. And so this is so exciting because the Holy Spirit, the important thing is that the whole, so Jesus promised that he would give us the Holy Spirit. And now he comes inside and he lives there forever. And so this is so amazing for us. The actual Spirit of God, He now lives inside us forever. Yes. And so, and not, and so there is something, there is something that is connected with this. So not only, so not only that we have received the Holy Spirit, but we have also received something else. So what is this? Of course, it is that we have received power. We have received power along with the Holy Spirit. We have received power along with the Holy Spirit. And so this is why, this is why it is so amazing. Because not only did Jesus give us the Holy Spirit, but now we also receive power. Because Jesus had said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea to the ends of the earth. So you and I, we have now received not only the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of God. But we also have received power. So you and I, we have received power from God. This is the power of God. Yes. And so, and so this is so amazing because not only do we receive the Holy Spirit, but we also receive power, spiritual power. Yes. So this is what the Bible is telling us. Yes. And so you and I, we should, we should, get, to, we should get to know about this power. Because if we understand what this power is, about this spiritual power, and then we can be able to use it. Yeah, so this is what is so amazing about the barrier movement. You and I, we can perceive it, we can feel it, we can use it. Yes. And so now, and now, what is this power precisely? What is this power? And so this is a spiritual power. It isn't a fleshly power, but it is a spiritual power. And we use this power, and we, and we use this power, of course, to do the work of God. Yes. And so you and I, and so what we can see in the Bible is that, is that the power, it is connected. It is connected. If we look precisely at the Bible, we see everything going on in the Bible. We can see there was a connection. There was a connection with power, what is called power in the Bible, and it is connected with angels. Yes. And so angels, you know, we have also been mentioning it recently, that angels, they are, they, are, they are spiritual beings. They don't have a physical body. Angels are, phys angels are, cre are beings. They are personal beings, but they don't have a physical body. And they go around, they go around uh, doing the tasks that God gives them. They go back and forth and so on. And then, but what we can see in the Bible and what I want to talk about today is that power, as mentioned in the Bible, is connected with angels. Yeah. And so we can just, we can, we can pretty much, we can pretty much understand that angels and power, it is synonymous. Yes. And so we're talking about, we are talking about this spiritual power and we can, and we can connect it with angels. Yes. And so whenever, whenever, whenever um, Jesus, Jesus went around, so therefore we can, we can basically understand it like this. Whenever uh, Jesus, for example, he went, around, uh, he went around Judea, he went around preaching the gospel, he went around preaching the gospel and he went around uh, healing people, laying hands on the sick, 
He went around driving out demons. He went around rebuking these demons and driving them out and performing many healings and signs. And so, because he did this and he, he was doing this with great power, the power of God, and so we can basically understand this. We can basically understand this as, as synonymous with angels. God was sending him angels. God was sending him angels uh, to help Jesus to help Jesus with the healing, to help him with the healing ministry. So Jesus, so Jesus was, Jesus was, uh, lay, Jesus was laying hands on the sick, and he was healing people, and he was doing all these things. And so it was basically the angels. The angels were sent by God to help Jesus, uh, to give him, uh, to to help him with the ministry for healing, to give him that, to give him that strength. That power to heal. So it was. It was actually the angels from God. Uh, they were at work. They were doing their work uh, behind the scenes, helping Jesus, helping Jesus with the healing and the driving out of demons. Yes. So this is this is what Pastor Pastor Kim had so wisely shown to us, and so we can really confirm it anywhere in the Bible, particularly when like the disciples of Jesus like a Peter or Paul or Jesus himself, when they went around doing these actual healing and uh, these signs and casting out these demons. And so whenever this happens, whenever this happens, you and I can understand that, precisely speaking, it is the angels, the angels of God, they are at work. They are, they are at work and they are... Um, they are behind the scenes. They are doing the work. Yeah, so it is these angels that are at work behind the scenes. They are doing this work. Yes, and so this is very helpful for us. So now we have made the connection that this power mentioned in the Bible, it is connected with angels. It is connected with angels. And so, and so we can make a connection here. And so this is very important. Because God, God, so this is, this is connected with our everyday lives. So let us connect this with our everyday lives. So God, God, he sent his angels. So God, he sent his angels. Why? And why God sends his angels so that they can help us in our lives of faith. Yes. So God, he sends his angels. He still does send his angels. Why? So they can help us. In our lives of faith. Yeah, so God, He not only He not only sends His angels to Jesus uh, and to other people in the Bible, but God He sends His angels to us as well. He sends His angels to us so that they can help us in our lives of faith, they can help us in our ministry, they can help us, uh, they can help us to heal, they can help us to drive out these demons very powerfully, and many other things. So, and so this is what happens. And so God is not only at work in the past, but God is also at work today in the same way. And so let us just read it together, just so that we can see. So there are many Bible passages to tell us this, about what is actually going on in the present, behind, in the present, although we cannot see it. And so let us read it together. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Let us, let us read it together. Verse 14. Let us, let us read. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? Yes. And so this is also, so, so we can see that God, he sends his angels as ministering spirits. They are spirits who help us, who minister to us. They help us. And so they are, they are sent to help us and to serve us, to serve us because we believe in Jesus. And so this is what is going on. This is, as we know, the things written in the Bible, they are not only found in the past. We know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, yeah, so, so what is going on? So this, these are the things that are going on today. Let us also read another Bible passage um, from the book of Acts. Let us read the book of Acts. So this is also, this is also shows how these angels, 
how these angels are at work. So these angels are at work, and they are at work today in the same way as in the past. Let us read Acts chapter 12. Let us read Acts chapter 12. And so this is just a one example of, one of, of, of how the angels do their work on behalf of God. So Acts chapter 12. Um, let us read. Let us read. Oh, so let us read verse 5. Let us just read verse 5. Let us read it here, what it is saying. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. So, so this is very important because it's found here that the church, they were, they were really earnestly praying to God. Why? For the sake of Peter, that God would help Peter, that God would save Peter. So the church, all, all those group of those powerful believers, they were joining together. They were praying. They were really earnestly praying. They were crying out to God with all their strength that God would save Peter. And then what happened? We can find it here. We can find it in verse 7. So here we can see that God is sending his angel. Why? To help Peter. Let us read verse 7. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. And let us just read the final one, verse 8. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. And so we can see that the angels here, they are at work. God sent the angel to help Peter. And in the same way, God is saying, God is sending these angels to us. Yeah, God still, he sends his angels. That is how God works in the spiritual realm. And so we, we, we should know that although other people may not believe that God is doing his work, we know that God is still doing his work. He is doing his work very powerfully like this. He is sending his angels. God is always sending his angels and those angels are going back and forth. They are doing their work. They are, they are helping out with the work of God like this. And so this is, this is why you and I, we can understand that God, he does send his angel to us believers to, so they can help us. Yeah, so and, so, and so, and so the logic goes, we can continue this logic that the more, the more of those angels that God sends to us, the more that we will be helped. Yeah, so the more that God sends those angels, he keeps sending angels, not just one or two, just like a, just two or three, but he's sending whole groups of angels, perhaps even legions of angels, legions of angels that God is sending so that, so that uh, God can do that powerful work upon those believers. And so this is how God can do his work in the spiritual realm. So, and so, the, and so, the, and so we, can just, we can just develop it that the more angels that God sends, the more angels that God sends. He keeps sending those angels. God keeps sending those angels to us. The more we will be helped and the more powerful we will be. And so you and I, we can be, we, God can help us in this way. Yeah, so and, so, and so this is where we come in. This is what we can do. We can make, uh, as you and I, we are trying to do good. We are trying to serve God and we are trying to obey God. The more we do this, the more that God, he will see us. He will see that uh, we need, oh, 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 these, oh, these believers, they are, really, they are really doing some good work for me. And so, okay, okay, I will send them more angels uh, so that they can have more strength. Yeah, and so this is what God does when he sees that we really want to do this, to do this good work of God, and then God, he is sending those angels, and we can, and he will help us more, and they will help us more. Yeah, so, and so you and I, we can really understand it like, it is like when, when we are going to the gym, 
So if anybody goes to exercise or they may be going to the gym and then they and then they go to the gym and then they and they work on the machines and they are developing their muscles. And you know, the first time we work those muscles, it is very painful. It is very painful and we can't lift very heavy weights. And and yet however, so we, we are and we are very tired the first few times that we go to the gym, but after a while, after we're doing it, and more and more we go we go to the gym more regularly we keep testing our muscles and then the more we go later on later on it becomes easier and why does it become easier to lift those weights because our muscles are being developed because our muscles are being developed our muscles are growing because according to our needs our muscles are growing and then the muscle becomes stronger and larger and so this is how it works and so this is how this is this is how we can help better understand about what is going on here. And not only this, so but now, so now we know about what is going on. So there is also uh, we also we also have to take warning. Not all, we have to take warning about this because God He not only sends us these angels, uh, and so these angels they can be very helpful for us. And so these angels that God is sending to us they are very helpful. However, however, there is there is a other side to this. Yeah, so and so for let us go back to the example of the gym when we go into the gym. And so you and I, we are working those muscles in the gym. We go regularly to the gym and we develop our muscles and, and we, we have stronger muscles now. However, suddenly we have the attitude, ah, oh, yeah, I just I don't want to go to the gym anymore. I don't want to exercise. I don't want to do regular regular exercise, exercise for a healthy body. I just want to relax. Maybe I'll just watch some TV at home. I'll watch some TV. Or maybe I'll start eating some eating some tasty food. You know, it's more relaxing. It feels better. And so I don't want to really do some exercise at the gym. Yeah, it feels better this way. And then what happens if we continue these bad habits? If we continue these bad habits and we indulge in it, what happens? Unfortunately, although we grew those muscles, later on those big muscles they actually turn into fat and so we we often we often hear uh we often hear those gym trainers they tell us they warn us that if we don't continue to develop these muscles then we start immediately eating again those muscles they actually turn into fat and and and, and it causes all kinds of discomfort and we get and we gain weight and stuff it doesn't look very good and and so on and we know what happens and so there is also this is also the similar way that we can look uh, that we can look at uh, the angels. So God, He is sending us angels because He sees that we need them. He sees that we need these angels so we can we can continue to do powerful work. But then perhaps, like the gym, we suddenly have a change of attitude and we go, Ah, well, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I don't I don't want to obey God. I don't want to do this good work and serve God. I just want to just, you know, do some do whatever I want to do. You know, maybe 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 for example, maybe I just want to drink some drink uh we just drink some alcohol or do these these things or do these bad things, whatever it is. And then and then what happens because because we are not obeying we are not obeying God, we are not doing what He wants us to do, then what happens? What happens? The function of those angels, they kind of change. They kind of change. Uh, the function of what these angels are doing, they start to change. Yeah, so, and there are whole books translate. So Pastor Kim, he has, he has written and, and has translated whole entire books about this, about these concepts. You and I know about this. We know about the ideas of deceiving spirits and what is happening because of the work of demons. We know that this is happening. So, and so a way to understand is that just like in the gym, so if we don't, if we don't uh, put the Word of God into practice, we don't have the desire to do these things and we kind of go off in our own way. And so those angels that were meant to help us, they were meant to help us, actually they start to change. It is, it is like muscles growing into fat. They're not, they're not really helping us at all. And then we kind of, and then these angels work to deceive us and then they get more. And then, uh, in, although they were originally meant to help us, 
they actually just keep pushing us into the wrong direction. Just like muscle, muscle turning into fat and then you and I, we, we, keep, uh, we keep relaxing and so on. And so this is, uh, this is what I just want to briefly mention. We will perhaps, we will perhaps uh, talk about it later on. So you and I, let us understand that uh, you and I, God is sending angels to us. God is sending his angels to us. And because of this, now, now we can receive this power. We can receive this power and then we can do even more good work for God. Yes. So we must understand that th these angels are working everywhere around us and God is willing to send us these things. So we can pray to God and crying out loud that God will send us these angels. Yes. And so what I want to do, so now that we understand this, what I want to do is that you and I, let us obey God. Let us obey God. And the more we obey God, and the more that he will be very happy and pleased. And then he will see, he will see that we need, we need some help. We need some help. We need, we need some strength from God. We need some assistance. And because God sees that we need this. And this is why God, finally, he sends us his angels. He keeps sending those angels to help us. And now we have that, we have that assistance to do the work of God. So this is what we should do. We can really put this into practice, you and I, and we can live a very joyful, active faith. And so now that we know about this, we know about what is going on, let us pray to God. Let us really pray to God. Let us give thanks to God. And let us declare to God that we will continue to please Him. We will do His work. So we know about these angels, how God is, God is at work because He's sending those angels. And so let us pray to God that he would send us more angels and, and they, will, they will assist us and we can do more and more good work. We know what is going on now. And so let us pray to God and give him the praise. Let us pray. Holy God, we Father, we thank you for what you have taught us today. We thank you that this is, a, this is your precious word. We thank you that we now understand about the spiritual realm. We know that you are sending those angels to us. You are sending them to us again and again. We know you are at work today. You are at work in our lives, in our lives of faith. And we pray that you would give us more of those angels, that you would send more of your angels to help us, to help the family of believers. We pray that, uh, that, and that because you help us this way, we can do more of your work. We can, do, we can obey you more. We can please you. We pray that you would help us. Holy Father, we thank you for this wonderful grace that you have given us. You have, we thank you that we have understood about the spiritual world, what is going on in the spiritual realm. We thank you and we pray that you would give us uh, more wisdom and more power, that we can continue to do your work. We pray that you would give us everything we need to do everything that pleases you. We give you thanks and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.